Hello and welcome to Getting Candid with me, your girl Helen. You are joining me from the Best Western Plus Hotel in Lusaka. So remember, we are still celebrating our 10 episodes of our beautiful women and I am super excited because I'm loving each and every episode, guys. And I really hope you're getting inspired and motivated by each and every guest that we're bringing to you. And I really just hope you're learning one or two things because I am. Every episode is inspiring and motivating me and encouraging me to even do more with myself and with my life and with other people as well. So today, my guests, guys, it's a beautiful Chilufia Muelo, who I worked with at uh, ZNBC. She's been in the media for a long time, but now she's in the corporate world. I just want to know her story. How did she start her media works? And how did she decide to finally move into the corporate world? I want to know more. I want to learn. I want to get motivated. Join me on the other side as I chat with her. And also remember to subscribe to this channel. Welcome back. I mentioned that I'll be chatting with one of the most influential media personalities that we had in the country. She's still considered as a media personality for some of us. She's still a part of us. She's now in the corporate world and doing big things. I'm talking about Chilufia Mueloa. How are you? I'm good, Helen. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to be here. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's great to always have sit down with a fellow woman, have a chat around career and life. Yes. Yeah, so hey, I hope I'm still inspiring <laughs> of course you are of course yeah that's why we have you on this table today you know we haven't seen each other for like a year but i think i saw you this year you didn't see me and i tried to scream i'm like hello, hello. oh my god where uh at the stanbic uh, music festival oh. I was in the zone. Yes. No, but I understand. <laughs> that was all, Because even I was overly excited. I'm just like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah. But, oh, wow. Yeah, that was a great experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good to see you here. How's the corporate world? Um, busy. Busy, busy. Fast-paced. Yeah. Um, exciting. And um, yeah, always challenging. And, and which is good because I'm, I think challenges make us better. How was the switch for you from being a producer? Yo. To being uh, public relations, mm -hmm. yeah, head of corporate affairs. Um, yeah. It was a shock, <laughs> <laughs> culture shock, I, I would call it. Um, so I was, I moved from the public sector, you know, yeah. public um, national broadcaster, yeah. and I was mostly in front of the camera. Yes, yes. And yes, doing productions, uh, you know, sometimes we go in the field and and whatnot. So that switch was, it was similar as in, in the sense that I was still dealing with stakeholders because that's what we're dealing with even, uh, uh, you know, as, as a broadcaster. But I was dealing with stakeholders from a different perspective. And then I had the public ones as well as the internal stakeholders. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think I have a very supportive team. I have a very supportive boss and they made it easy for me. Um, I would be taken through the loops of what needs to be done, how things should be done, because you know, every business or institution has ways of how they do things. Yeah. So yeah, I needed to learn all the acronyms that come with certain words. I needed to learn basically just the style of doing, um, you know, work at MultiChoice. So it was, it was, it was difficult. Yeah, it was but now you're settled. Yeah. But now I'm settled, and I love it. Yes, I. I really you you were shining, it. like from us who were just seeing from outside. We didn't even see the struggles. You know, that's the goodness. Yeah. It was all covered up in whatever was being presented <laughs> to us. <laughs> so I think you're doing a good job. So now let's just uh, take take it back a little bit. Born and bred in Copper Belt. Were you yes. born and bred in Copper Belt? Yes, yes. So actually, I was born in Lusaka. Then my mom moved to the Copper Belt when I was really young. Okay. So I don't even remember much about Lusaka. About Lusaka. Yes, yeah. I, I grew up on the Copper Belt. Um, I grew up with my aunt and uncle, so my mom's older sister took me in when I was two years old. Where was your mom? Um, she was around, but you know, she was the last born in their family. Uh -huh. So it was that thing of, you know what, let's, let's help her okay. raise this little girl. Yeah. yeah, and then my aunt at that time had only one daughter. So it was also good for her child to grow up with another, you know, female in the house other than herself. Um, that's, that was Mufalera, that Kitwe, then we moved to Mufalera. My uncle used to work for the mines at CCM. Mm -hmm. And we moved to Mufalera. Um, I started school uh, at my aunt's um, school where she used to teach. She was a teacher. Uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah, so um, I grew up on the Copper Belt, uh, Mufalera. I uh, started my primary school there. Uh, nursery as well, nursery primary school. Mm -hmm. And then my uncle got a job um, in Kitwe, working for National Brewery, so we moved to Kitwe. And I went to Kitwe Primary School until mm, 
grade, yeah, around my grade seven there. Then I went to Helen Kaunda for two years. And then I was sent to boarding school in grade 10. I really loved um, boarding, boarding school. school. Really? Yes. I was, I, I, I wanted boarding school. My mother prevented that. And now I'm like, I don't want my kids to go to boarding school. Yeah. I'm, I'm I, think it's, I think it's a very important um, so, sort of phase in one's life because it teaches you how to, how to be self-reliant, first of all how to take care of yourself, not just taking care of, of yourself, managing people socially, yeah. but also physically. So you wash your, for yourself, you, yeah. you, you take care of your hygiene, you grow up, you're independent, yeah. yeah. And for me, I went all the way to Kasama. Which what is so, that? St. Teresa Girls. Ah, yeah, in I, I really wanted to go to that school. It, My it's a beautiful me. school. My mom just All said girls. No. Yeah. And I met some pretty good friends um, yeah. at, that, at that school. Yeah, I, we're still friends today. Are you, is that where you met Francesca? No, Francesca I grew up with in Kitwe. We went <gasps> to the same church. Really? So, it, so even when I went to boarding school, yeah. I had, she had to write me letters every <laughs> month or every week just oh to keep God. our friendship going. Yeah. yeah. No, you guys are sisters at this point. We're literally sisters. Yeah, you're yeah. sisters because you've known each other your entire life. Almost. Yeah, yeah. almost half my life. Yeah. yeah. I'm 40, so you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 40. Oh, yes, I saw, I saw, I saw, I, I saw that on social media. Unbelievable. How, How does, does it feel, feel 40? You know, I don't, I don't I know, know what that. the feeling should be. <laughs> Thank you. I was telling somebody that I have so many people that I know, friends that I know that are turning 40, that it's, yeah. it's no longer scary to turn 40. Yeah, all 83s are turning 40 this year, so. <laughs> and it's like, people are looking young. Yeah, I think maybe it's the lifestyles, um, you know, exercising, you know, the, there's people eat a certain way. Yeah. Um, there's also things that people do to their bodies to stay young. But for me, I think it's, um, I'm, I'm a small person, generally, I'm yeah. a small person. Yeah. yeah, and then I don't eat much. Okay. Yeah, I drink a lot of water. Okay. Um, That's I'm very active, so I I love to cook. I like walk around, do this, this. I'm I'm a very hands-on person. I involve myself with anything. Yeah. Yeah. So that helps me um, stay fit, and yeah, I, I take care of myself. At least you yeah. know. Funny thing is that right now I'm not even I'm not even worried that oh the time will come when I turn forty because I'm like forties are looking so good. It's actually. the new twenty. Yes. It's like <laughs> the new forties. I look it's so the good. New it's nice to look at. Yeah. And it's, it's it's great. I don't know how 40 year olds then were feeling, but I, I feel great. Yeah. yeah. I don't feel 40. Yeah. Or whatever I think it's it should feel like. Eh? I just feel Young. like me. Yeah. Yeah. I still feel like I'm in my twenties actually. Great. <laughs> Keep feeling <laughs> in like my that. 30s. I feel like I'm in my twenties. Uh no, let's talk about uh, you going to Evelyn Horn. You went to study journalism? Yeah. Was it what you wanted to do from the get go? So I wanted to be an air hostess. Oh, you were going to suit though. But I was told I'm too but short. Too short, so. yeah. <laughs> but, then, but I was like, I mean, can't you wear heels on the plane? Like, no, not a certain type of heel. No, it's it's a casmo one, so, you, yeah. so it won't make a difference. <laughs> but yeah, so I was basically talked out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then when I went to Evelyn Horn College, actually before I went, uh, after grade twelve, I, I got a job at a clinic in Kito before we moved to Lusaka. Uh, Kitwe surgery. I worked there for I think I think like a good one year. Okay. And while working there, I became friends with the nurses, the doctors, the pharmacists, everybody. And I was just smelling medicine. I loved the you smell love? of Panadol and chloroquine. Yes, that hospital smell. That, you know, amoxil and all <laughs> that. <laughs> I loved that. And so I was at the front desk and I would welcome, you know, the patients and register them and take them through to the doctors or to, yeah. to the lab and whatnot. So I, 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 I met friends with this girl who was in the pharmacy and she was studying at Evelyn Horn College. Uh -huh. And so I was like, I can do that. So tell me about Evelyn Horn College. And she told me, I was like, you know what, I should do that. So when we eventually moved to Lusaka, uh -huh. um, my cousin who was in the media a while back asked me what I wanted to study. And I said, I want to do pharmacy. And she was like, what? <laughs> I said, I want to study pharmacy at Evelyn Horn College. Yeah. yeah, and then she said, no. You, first of all, you don't suit. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how pharma pharmacists should look like, yeah. but I think it's such a great career. Um, I've been in that space, so I, I, I kind of like it. And she said, no, you have such a bubbly personality. You should do journalism. 
Yeah. Yeah, you should be in front of the camera. You should speak to people. Yeah. I'm like, okay, am I, 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 I don't know. I thought I was a shy person at that time. I'm like, I don't know if I can talk in front of people. She was like, you can. And they have it at Evelyn Horn College. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's when I went. I went and just asked, what are the requirements? You know, when's the next class starting? What is it all about? And they explained to me and I enrolled. And you, you were just fitting. And here we are. You, you just fit I in. I just feeling it. Do you remember your first experience on TV? Yes. What it was, was scary. It, was it movie TV? So my first experience was um, in broadcasting was on radio. Yeah. And I think radio is important to help you as a journalist or as if you're thinking of going into broadcasting. It, it gives you the confidence to speak in front of a microphone. No one is looking at you, but people are listening to you. Yeah. So you have to, you know, obviously research, think through what you're saying because they're relying on your voice. So that helped me. I did um, news at Horn FM. I did programs at Horn FM. Um, we did a lot of stuff with Francesca um, on radio mm -hmm. and another lady called um, Namwaka. I think she's married to Thrill Mbachi, who works for... Um, Thrillmatic. Oh, okay. Rock FM. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thrillmatic. I, I met her there. And so we became friends and would do, like, you know, girly radio shows and stuff like that. So that's where my confidence came from. And I think that it helped me when I went on TV. Yes, it was scary the first time because, I mean, you, you have to look the part. You have to act believable or be believable in what you're saying. As opposed to radio, you can be anybody you want to be. Nobody's going to see you. So my first stint on, ra on TV was at Movie TV. Yes. That was Sunrise were... Breakfast Show. Was it, uh, that oh. was, was it after you were done with... Uh... <laughs> you were like, oh, what oh, oh, happened? Right? You know, because when I went on TV, my brother told me that you looked scared. <laughs> It showed you looked really, really scared. And my friends at work also told me the same thing, that your sister looked scared. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, yeah, it was, it was the first time. So, yeah. You, yeah. you didn't make we any... We built it from there. You didn't make any mistakes. Like. No, I, w I just wasn't talking. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking. I was agreeing with my co-presenter. <laughs> Everything. Oh, oh yes, yes. Mm. I was so scared. I was scared. Ah, I remember my first, like, my first live proper TV presenting. I kept saying sorry. 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 Like, I make yeah. a mistake and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to say, oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but then, uh, Evelyn Horn, how, how was the experience eh, with everything, your, your colleagues? And I know most of them at Evelyn Horn, you worked with them at ZMBC. Like, yes. Me, most of them are at ZMBC. Mm -hmm. how, how was it? How, what was your plan? Was it everybody, was it everybody's goal to say, I want to work at ZMBC for one, one time? No, um, it just don't happen. I mean, first of all, ZNBC is like, you know, the biggest yeah. broadcasting house in the country. And then, um, so for me, when I, when I finished, uh, when I went to Evelyn Horn College, I was in the same class, yes, with Judy, with, you know, um, Paul Shalala, Katushi Walia, uh, Francesca, uh, and quite a, a lot of other people who went into print, others went to radio, others went to, you know, corporate uh, organizations. I completed, but immediately I completed, I moved to South Africa. I got married and moved to South Africa and I was there for about four plus years. So when I came back, um, Costa was my senior at Evelyn Horn College and, you know, I wasn't doing anything. Yeah. And then Francesca then was at Movie TV and so she was like, oh, let me tell Costa you're back. Because, I mean, we used to work together at Horn FM, we used to do programs and things like that. He actually introduced me to radio. Um, at Horn. So he said, you can do it, you have a voice, come, you know, let's see what, what, what you can try. And that's how I started. Mm -hmm. Again for TV, it's like, oh yeah, let's see if we have a position and, you know, we can, we can offer you something. And I joined Movie TV. Um, yeah, TV. Woo! Uh, so my first show, Sunrise Breakfast Show, sitting with him. You can imagine. And you're sitting with Costa. Imagine. That's already intimidating. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's I want to watch with him the first time I want to see I mean. Him. Yeah, that's too much. So he kind of noticed on the first episode what happened. And he called me into his office and said, you know, I know you've just come back. You're probably not 
familiar with the politics and what's socially what's happening in Zambia, but just take time to read. Um, you could read anything. So it could be today's paper. What are the stories that are trending because the breakfast show is you know you'd go through different papers you'd pick a story and relate it to Zambia so you have to know how to bridge the different stories but just read a lot watch a lot of TV international local just be updated with what's happening current affairs yeah. and then it will be seamless yeah. so I started doing that and I think it was like two weeks or a month after I was doing the show on my own you oh really yeah, yeah. on your own i was doing it on my own i would do it and it was flawless it was flawless i mean obviously they would bring um, a, a reporter to give you you know the, the the newsroom update and whatnot but i would lead yeah i would lead the show that yeah. that was nice what is your uh, the biggest memory that you have uh, working for movie tv some of the vivid memories yeah um i did a a, a story um about women in politics um, basically a story about empowering and uh, how women in politics um, you know are empowering you know themselves but also inspiring the next generation of leaders mm -hmm. and how they are being brave enough to step into that landscape that's seen as you know male dominated yeah. and things like that and so I did a story um, to look back at those women who were, went before us so our freedom fighters mm -hmm. what did it, what is it that pushed them to step up and support the men, the Kaundas at that time. And I spoke to Mama Kankasa. A very, you know, short little 15 minute documentary that I did. And I submitted it to the BBC, um, um, they call it Media Trust. Um, if, correct me if I'm, I don't know if I'm correct, but um, there's a trust that creates um, sort of like a training session for journalists across the world. So they had asked for entry for that year and it was around stories uh, around women. Yeah. And so I submitted that and I was picked. Oh. And that was like a few months after joining Movie TV. Really? And I was selected to attend a training in Spain, Barcelona, Spain. And it was ab around women and children reporting. Yes. That's why you like women programs. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, liked yes. yes. Programs. I've always liked women programs, but I feel yeah. that women you know, don't get an opportunity. Well, maybe now things are a little bit better, but a few years back, women did not have the platform that we have now, yeah. sitting here and talking about my life mm -hmm. and my struggles and my wins and how that inspires somebody, yeah. somebody else. But also shining a spotlight on those women who are, you know, breaking boundaries, breaking barriers and stepping into male-dominated industries. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now we're seeing that, but a few years back, it wasn't like that. So I, I love telling those stories. And I think there's so many of them. There's so many stories around children who are thriving, around women who are thriving and doing the most. Women in our community and not just women in the corporate world. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's, that, was, that will forever be memorable because it was my first trip to Europe. And how, how was, how, that's what I don't say, how was yeah. Spain? Yeah, how it, was... it was beautiful. I went there uh, during the cold season. It wasn't snowing, but it was really, really cold. Yeah. Yeah, but it was wonderful. I met a great um, team from Reuters and other colleagues from other African, I mean, other countries around the world. I think there were only two Africans, myself and a lady from Zimbabwe. But she doesn't count because she, she lived in Germany. So oh, okay. <laughs> I was the only, so one, from the only one from Africa. Yes. Okay, nice. How long did you work for Movie TV? Um, almost a year. I think about nine months. Then you moved to ZNBC? Then um, I moved to ZNBC as a part-time producer. Okay, How, when did... Because, you know, you work for nine months. Yeah. For some people, they always feel like, oh, this is an institution that gave me TV time for the first time. I should, I should work a little longer. I should work a little longer. Why did you feel, okay, I think I'm ready to search for greener pastures? Yeah, I could see and feel the growth. Yeah. And um, I think when you join an institution, it's not a, I mean, you're loyal to them, yes, but it's also about your growth. Yeah. It's about the different opportunities that you feel you fit in. And when somebody told me that ZNBC was looking for part-time producers, I didn't care that it was part-time, even though I was living a full-time job. Yeah. I didn't mind because for me, it was about growth and how I can be, get myself on a bigger platform and inspire more people. And so I applied for that and I got it, but believe it or not, 
I got into that part-time job and only worked for a month. Wow. And an opening for a full-time producer came up and I applied for that. I went through the process of interviews and everything and I got the job. You, you were meant to be there. <laughs> Literally, you know, I'm, I'm hearing a story and I think somebody will say, oh, uh, your career was like flawless. Yeah. It was like moving, moving from one yeah. stage to the other. It was like it was meant for you. At that point, you, you would have thought, ah, if I was a pharmacist, I would have wasted <laughs> I have wasted this. Now you join the NBC, a big institution. How is it feeling the, just the first week at work? Do you remember your first week at work? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, actually, the first week, they asked me to open the station. Ah. Yes, TV One. Oh, was TV, TV One. TV they asked one? me to do it on TV One. <laughs> <laughs> That's opening TV Two. Was no. it the official one? What? No, what as in opening the station. You know, remember oh, how? Remember there was, oh, there was so they were closed? Yes, yes. yes. And then yes. you had to open, you know, you read the, um, I think it was six oh, no, hours was, news. Oh. Yes. Forgotten. You've forgotten. It's been that long, Helen. <laughs> yeah. So I was asked, not even six, six was on Saturday. It was actually 10 hours. So you had to read the news at 10 hours. After the national anthem. Yes, after the national anthem and everything. <laughs> and then you had to read the news and then the programming started. Oh. Yes. That's so how it that's was. Your first so remember, when TV1 would close, they would tune to TV2, which was 24 yes. hours. Yes. 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 So at 10 hours, then they'd open. Yeah. So that my first week at the NBC, they asked me to open the station. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and wow. can you believe I got calls from my former workmates at Movie TV, like, we saw you opening the station. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure you, you welcome, asked it because welcome, you had yeah. already... And that's what they told me. I'm like, but I just started. Guys, you can't do this to me. Like, yeah. But you, you just, the other day you were reading that movie. You read news. Wow. <laughs> yeah, just just read the script. What you've been given is what you read. This is how you open this. this, 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 this. Did you have to audition for news casting as, as movie, as ZMB? So no, they just, they just, because your audition was movie TV. Yes, yeah. because I used to do it at movie. They just told me that you will open the station. And from then on, I started reading the news bulletin. So there'd be one at 14, one, you know, and eventually um, I found myself on TV too, yes, reading the news as well because I was in the TV2 um, unit. Mm -hmm. And then one day, Faith Kandaba, may her soul rest in peace, she just walked up to me and said, Chilu, you're going to do the first health segment on the 19 Hours Main News. How did that? I was scared, obviously. <laughs> I, I was like... That was your first time on 19 Hours News. That was my first time on 19 Hours, yes. Yeah. And it was like three, three little stories. Yeah. But it felt like an hour. <laughs> because I know the power that 19 Hours News holds. Yes. Everybody is watching yeah. it. Yeah. And they were introducing this new segment in the news. Yeah. So then the casters would have to introduce me and say, now we have health news with Chilufia Mwelwa. And then I would have to now take over the reins and read and then close and then take it back to them. Yeah, that was kind of scary at first, but um, I continued doing it and yeah. And you know, the way Faith Kandawa was, if she believes in you, she believes in yes. you. You literally just yes. know I'm doing something right. Yeah, she, yeah. Was, she was awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, she was. She would, she would rise and she was lifting others yeah. as she was rising which was great i like that she was honest she would tell you i don't like this reporting i don't like how you pronounce the words come stand yes. next to me i want you to do and it I think like we need like that we need you, that you, especially we, in broadcasting we really need that um you see when you become so 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 two people have you know spoken to my life at zmbc in o2 um she was my boss at, at tv at tv2 she would tell me because every time I, I, even up to now, I, I got nervous going on TV. But she told me, when you stop getting nervous, then that's a problem. Yeah. The nerves are there to keep you grounded. So don't feel bad that you're nervous and what, just control, learn to control your nervousness and do your best. And for me, before I start, I'm a bit, ner you know, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. And then immediately I just, ah, I just. Uh, it's always the first few seconds. Exactly. <laughs> we are rolling, we are rolling, we are rolling. You <laughs> and know? you're enjoying it. And you're enjoying it. Um, and, and Faith also um, told me that, um, first of all, putting me on that platform was, was, was a way of showing me that she had confidence in me and she trusted me to, the, to do the job. Um, and so, yeah, those two people.
kept me uh, you don't need believing everybody. in myself. You don't need everybody. Yeah. But those two women encouraged me to say that I could do it. And every time I did it, they would actually say that was great. Nice. They would come back and give me feedback. And so we need that um, as, as female broadcasters. Because sometimes when you lose it, you become big headed and you feel like, you know, I can go on air even without reading or researching or understanding how, like you said, certain words are pronounced. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a problem. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because it affects your output yeah. at the end of the day and you don't want that. Yeah. Um, so that mentorship, that guide is really important to keep us grounded, to keep us human. What are some of the challenges you've faced in your broadcasting, like both at Movie TV and ZNBC? Yeah, um, I think just not being, just not being free to do stuff because you're on TV and people are going to judge you and yeah. what. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's the downside. Also, um, there's a lot of competition. Oh yeah, and, and it can get ugly. Competition it does get ugly. Yeah. Um, but I think what's important is knowing who you are trusting God and believing in your skill. Yeah. Like, you know I bring something here. Yeah. So, not being arrogant about it, mm -hmm. but to firmly, confidently, assertively say that I'm, I bring something to this yeah. and I deserve to be here. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm not competing with you. There's so much space for everybody yeah. up here. So let's do it together. Yeah. And it always feels like a competition when people are doing, oh, this one is a program, oh, I want more viewers, I want more viewers, then uh, sometimes it gets dirty, yeah. which is sad. But uh, I wanted to, uh, when, while you were at ZNBC, you went on to further your studies. Yes, so, so when I joined, I was already doing that. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was doing uh, UNISA. Yeah. So in SA, I would go to class, but when we moved back, I had to do it online. So I did uh, finally complete. I got my uh, bachelor's degree in public administration and communication facilitation. And I mean, being at, Mo at, at ZNBC provided or gave me opportunities that I'll never forget. Um, yeah. I traveled to China for training. I traveled, um, I was selected as best television presenter, Miss Award, I won that. And then after that, I was selected by the US Embassy um, exchange program to travel to the States uh, and this was also another you know exciting program media and democracy and I was the only person from Zambia out of a hundred journalists from around the world so that was you know something that also just kept me going in my career um, as a journalist I got those opportunities because I know that I put in my best in everything I did presenting and my scripts and whatnot and it got me those opportunities, so I'm proud of that. Um, so I got my, my, my uh, degree and then I enrolled for my master's at UNSA, which I'm working towards finishing. Ah. Yeah. So school and work. I think the balance is really important. Yeah. Um, we live in a very competitive world. Um, other than just your skills and your, uh, your talents, you must have academic backing to yes. be able to present and be competitive at that level. Um, so school is important. Um, as, as a journalist, you need to read. You need to understand what's going on in the environment, whether political, economic, socially. You need to understand and be able to articulate that. And I think school and academics helps you to do that better. Yeah. I know there are people who haven't done school and they're really good. And, but I think that background, that academic background gives you opens more doors for you. Yeah, it does open up and it's nice to see because we've seen a lot of uh, young people that haven't even like gone to school. They're saying I want to be a journalist, but the moment maybe they have, because now there's a lot of opportunities. Yes. Somebody can, can be famous what? off social, social media and they're comfortable. They don't feel like they're making little money and they're saying, I don't want to go to school. Yeah, I think that's something that social media uh, has brought. I mean, the downside. Yeah. You think that because you have a, you know, 500, half a million followers or, yeah. or people who, you know, look at your stuff and you're like, I've arrived because I'm making money and whatnot. But I think it's important to have that yeah. strong foundation, academic strong foundation. It could be a certificate or a diploma yeah. or it could be have anything, something. But have something, <laughs> yeah. have something. Because, you know, 
uh, social media it's it's up and down really. yeah yeah and also like you say there's a lot of if you keep looking you can find some scholarships if you say you don't have money just keep looking something can come up fellowships scholarships yeah there's so many ways that you can learn yeah yeah so you've heard it guys you have to to study you need your paper it's a backup plan also for yes. a lot of other things yes. <laughs> a lot of things do happen okay so actually you uh everybody i think who knows you personally they know that you you love your family you are a family woman how do you manage because right now you have school and work. you have work and then you you have a family right there how do you manage to keep the balance yeah um first of all i have a very supportive partner mm -hmm. my husband is very hands-on very very hands-on so um when we started having children our first born i wasn't working i was doing school so i was 100 percent at home but he would help me he would say okay you can go rest now i'll take care of the baby when we moved back um, we had our, our parents around um, my late parents were around so they would you know help out as well when i started work at movie tv but he was there yeah. um and he's encouraged me to even um what's the word grow further mm -hmm. he's allowed me to do that um, he's given me that support to grow to go back to school to do this and that to to challenge myself yeah. and meanwhile he's he's helping with the boys um, they are older now so they actually take care of themselves That's um, nice. yes we'll do the cooking they also do the cooking depending on what, what they want to eat but they are they're much they're gr they're older they can manage themselves. They even cook. They're really old. They they cook. Yeah. Yeah. They and, cook. and they like that you've And them we could go cook. out and they would stay home and ask us, so what time are you guys coming back? Okay, we'll come back at this time. Okay, we'll wait for you. Really? No, guys, you can sleep. Maybe we might come late. No, we'll wait for you. It's okay. Yeah. And you'll find them wa waiting for us, watching TV or, or playing video games. Nice, yeah. nice. And uh, are you seeing anybody following your footsteps, media, any of your kids? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> they know he's like yeah. I mean, my our our, our second born, he's 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 the um, clown of the family. Uh, so he's funny. I guess maybe I don't know towards art. I don't know. He likes yeah. music. He likes. He's always humming songs and singing wh wherever he's seated. So we're always yeah. joking like, let's get him a guitar. Yeah. Maybe you know he can be strumming some music. I don't know, but it's. I want them to do what they, what want. they want. Yeah, yes. that's true. I want them to. To, to have the freedom to choose what career they want because ultimately it's for them to do what they really love, what they're passionate about and what will make them happy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before we close, I'd like to know when, when you decided, because uh, we both know you love media, you, you enjoyed your job. When did you know that, oh, okay, I think I want to move to the corporate world now? Yeah. So that was 2020. I started feeling like I'm, I was stifled, like I wasn't growing. I had done eight years yeah. at ZNBC. Oh. I wasn't feeling challenged enough. Yeah. And, 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 and that feeling was affecting my output on TV as well. Yeah. I, wasn't, I, I, I stopped enjoying going to work. Yeah, that's a sign. <laughs> no offense to Zen Missy and everything, but I think that's a sign. Just, uh, I a just, ceiling. yeah, my spirit wasn't there. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't feeling it anymore. I tried. I remember uh, going on leave in December 2020. I, this was the height of COVID at the, at the time we had COVID. And we came back from Livingston. We had gone to Livingston with family and friends and we came back and I had COVID, right? Oh. And I, yeah, I was supposed to go back to work. Then I found out I had COVID. So I was away for another two weeks because of that. But I wasn't looking forward to going back. Yeah. And I was scared, like, Lord, if I go back and I'm feeling like this, I won't, I won't do my job properly. I won't, I won't enjoy it. Yeah. And you know, Helen, I love sitting in front of the camera and talking and presenting. I love that. But it stopped feeling like that. Yeah. Yes. Do you miss it sometimes? I, when I just moved, I, I used to miss it. But now, Especially the news. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd miss presenting the news. But now I'm okay. <laughs> What's next? I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. I yeah. mean, look at me. I'm, I'm in the corporate world. No, but world. you do look like you're enjoying now, what you're doing. Like. I, 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 won, I won an award this year. You as, did? Yeah, Emerging PR Practitioner oh, under Ziprec. 
congratulations. Thank you very much. So I feel like I'm, I'm finding my footing. I found it and I'm happy I'm thriving. Yeah. And I work with such a great team. Um, my boss is female and um, over 80% of the management team is female at Multi Choice. Oh wow, is that so you can imagine. Um, oh, it just happened. I think it just happened. Yeah. But also, I think the business has a deliberate policy of bringing in more females because even the middle managers, most of them are, are women. But but you know what, Helen? I like to think that women deliver. No, they, they do. do the work. They do. Yeah. They do deliver. They step up and do the yeah. work. No offense to the men. No offense to There's my actually colleagues. There's a man who's telling me that. I was doing some work with women. He said, "I like working with females because they deliver more than me." Yeah. 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 So I, 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 you know, I, I have so much confidence in her yeah. and, and she believes in me and she encourages me. Yeah. And yeah, that's great. I, that's a great environment to work in. And I really like what I do. I nice. really like my job. It's challenging sometimes. I have to do so, say stuff and, yeah. you know, difficult times of the year. But yeah, we go through it together yeah. as a team. So now, the hair, you know, as a broadcaster, people want you to, they want to get the weaves, they want to look nice, but you have stayed with that hair for so long. When did you start keeping short hair? Um, years back, years yeah. back, yeah. I remember uh, I started with, so I had joined this natural, naturalista page on Facebook, and a friend of mine who lives in the States was, you know, the admin. And so I started first by putting you know oils and mixing all sorts of stuff for hair and I would wear a wig or braid my hair or you know just hide it yeah. somehow but I told myself one day and my husband is also an encourager so yeah. he says mm, but you can do it mama you look nice you look nice with natural hair it actually makes you look younger yeah so I said but I don't think that I've never seen anybody on the main news with natural hair yeah. I mean other than dreadlocks Mm -hmm. I've never seen anybody just go with, you know, their hair out there. Natural hair for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, try it. So this one time, I'm going on the main news because now I became a main anchor. Yeah. And at that time, we were anchoring one person at a time. And I had done um, Bantu knots or Bantu twists. I don't know if you know them. Yeah, yeah. yeah I do. And then I undid them and I shagged it up and I put some pins just to, you know, make it look nice. And I read the news. And the I got was... mixed reactions. Yeah. Others were like, no, people don't like it. Others were like, you look nice. Like, That's you look African. African. You yeah. look Zambian. This is what we need to be yeah. seeing. Yeah. You know? So um, the people, I, I focused on the positive comments and I kept at it until they got used to it. And now it's like you yeah. look. I can't Even when I won my best television presenter award, mm -hmm. that's the entry I gave. I sent in the entry with my hair like that. But I mean, nice. just because I have this kind of hair doesn't mean I can't deliver. Yeah, yeah. I delivered and... Because I can imagine what? menus and you go with a haircut like that, it's like... Uh, <laughs> like what? Are you not serious? You're not serious. We... But I mean, world over. I mean, yeah. when you look at South Africa, they embrace you see that. a lot of their news anchors, presenters with natural hair, yeah. dreadlocks, yeah. you know, shaggy hair and whatnot. But, yeah. you know, there's a certain level. Obviously, you have to do it in a nice, neat way. But it's our hair. Mm -hmm. It's our crown. Yeah. As Africans, as a Zambian woman, I'm proud of this look. And... It's, I've never turned back. Ever yes. think of changing? Here and there, I've done braids. Like last yeah. month, I had some braids in. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. I love braids. Yeah. I, I basically love the African styles. You know, styles. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So it's just the confidence. I mean, the confidence yes. that you step out with short hair the first You days. can still wear a suit, rock a suit with your natural yeah. hair. Yeah. And still look good. Uh, any last words before we let you go? Um, yeah, I just... I guess my, my, my words would be... Believe in yourself. Wherever you come from, whatever you're doing, believe in yourself. Okay. There's so much um, that we can all do. There's so many opportunities out there. Yeah. And those opportunities, you don't have to think that I have to know someone to be here. I have to do this to yeah. be here. You have to believe in yourself, your skills, and work at getting better mm -hmm. every day. Get better. Because 
That's what I, I tell myself. Every day I tell myself I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, yeah. no matter the challenge. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put you on the spot now. Can you close the show for us? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> because you haven't been presented in a while. Helen, so close no, the show No, for no, us. no, you've caught me off guard. I don't know. Yeah. What's the name of the show? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the show is called Getting Candid with Helen. Yeah. You may, you may close it for us. <laughs> and we're doing a special 10 episodes for, dedicated to women. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> ah, Helen, why? <laughs> you can just say why? one word. I've forgotten my, my presenting No, skills. I don't think so. I don't think you can forget, though. I don't think so. It's, I know, it's like swimming and riding a bike. Yeah, it's like if, if yeah, you had got Doreen Kanzo today, I think she would it's still do it. It's a lifelong skill. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so that was our show. Um, speaking to wonderful, inspiring women. And I think it's important that young girls have mentors who speak into their life and who guide them because they've walked and walked through those steps before them. So this you know, episode is basically something that we hope will inspire you and will take you to a higher level in life. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Chilofia Muelwa. We'll see you next time on Getting Candid with Helen. Bye-bye. <laughs>